Namaste, yogis, and welcome to another installment of Yoga for Athletes. Today, we're going to dive into the hamstrings and help unlock a sticky place for many of us. So if you have a belt or a strap, maybe even a long scarf, a towel will work brilliantly. We will begin on our backs in Supta, Padagustasana, A, B, and C. So with that, we're going to be very conscious of how we move. So instead of diving into the twist, we're going to dive into the IT van and stay and linger there for a little bit. As you're ready, roll on to your back. Send your feet out towards the edge of your mat and reach for your strap, your blanket, your towel, whatever you may have. Bend your right knee and hug it into your chest. Put the ball of the foot into the strap and then make the strap nice and tight. Hug the shoulders into the back body so that the heads of the shoulders reach back for the mat. And maybe you can straighten out the leg, maybe it's bent. If you'd like to get this leg a little straighter and you're tight today, take your left foot, place it on the mat and then begin to straighten the leg. If you have the range of motion, just extend your left leg nice and long. And so from here, we'll hold onto the strap in both hands, but keep elbows locked into the side of the body. And then we'll take some micro pulses. Try to be mindful of where we're feeling the sensation. So we might be tight right into the connection into the hip. We might be into the arch of the foot, maybe even to the calf, but just rocking and starting to identify where we're feeling the tightest. Ground down through the left leg and press through the heel as though you were standing in that left leg. Stop for a moment. Press up through the heel so that you feel the line of the back of the leg extend. And then take just a little bit more, pulling those toes a little bit closer into the face. Press up through the heel, flex the toes, and then ease out for a moment. Take a big inhale, pull all the way in, using more of the strength of the legs than the strap, and begin to draw a little bit closer to the face. Continue to find strength through that left leg. Take a big inhale, and on the exhale, make space for the leg to come in even more. We'll be here for one more breath. Switching the strap over into the right hand, take the left hand, ground it down into the left hip so you're mindful to keep that hip on the mat. Roll the shoulder blades back and down, connect them to the mat on purpose, bring the heel back over the hip, and then turn the toes out towards the right side of your mat. As you do, make sure to take the rotation at the hip. And then when you're ready, just begin to bring that leg over to the right edge of your mat. As you do, once you find the space where there's sensation, sensation and not pain, then begin to also pull into the body. So it's not enough to just merely let the leg fall out to the side and be inactive, but engage, tighten through your strap, pull into your shoulder, and then lengthen through your heel once more. Continuing to dial the toes towards the mat so that you're articulating at the hip, getting into the outer part of the thigh, elongating the inner thigh, and breathing. And this might be your sticky place. You might be here just praying to get out of this, and that's okay. Dial it out a little bit. Back out a little bit. Breathe where you can breathe. Don't make it a fight. And then begin to feel your hand shift from your left hip to your low belly. Engage through those muscles there. Draw the right leg all the way back to the sky and switch the strap into the other hand. This is where we're going to be really mindful of that outer hip. So instead of simply rolling onto our left side and twisting, what we'll do is we'll take our right hand, the thumb will connect to the inner thigh, fingers will splay down the glutes, and we'll just draw that leg across the body. Only moving until we start to feel that right hip peel off the mat, and then we'll stay there. Press through the heel, flex through the toes. If you're really angry here on this side like I am, breathe into that space. Remind yourself that it's transient. We'll be out of this soon. And then inhale, come back to center. The toes are facing the back wall at first. Now we're going to rotate them in, again at the hip, just like we did when we rotated them out. Take your, that hand that's on your right hip, press the meat, the flesh of the thigh away, and then come over again. Notice how that changes the stretch, and you might even lose a little bit of distance as you come across the body. 
Hopefully you feel this a little more into the lower part of the leg as well. Breathe. And then allow an inhale to return that leg to center. Unloop the right leg. Take the strap just out to your left side and hug right knee into your chest, easing through the hamstring and opening the quad slightly. Taking that twist that we wanted to take before, your left hand will hold onto the outside edge of right leg. Right elbow will bend. You'll just take a 90 degree bend back of the hand onto the mat if it can and then begin to twist over with a bent knee, getting a little bit deeper into the side body stabler, stabilizers and opening the low back. Taking a big inhale, and on the exhale, see if you can press that knee a little bit closer to the earth while maintaining connection of right shoulder to the earth. And then inhale, come back to center. We'll massage the hip, taking both hands around the knee and just making some big circles in one direction. And then in the opposite direction. We'll move into our half happy baby. So if you need to bend that left knee, press the foot into the mat, or just begin to walk the hands down the shin, taking the outside edge of the, or taking the outside edge of the right foot with the right hand. As you do, left hand will move back to that left hip, keeping it grounded as you draw the right knee towards the right side body. Again, if this is too intense, you can take that foot to the mat. My seasoned practitioners, you might almost feel that lizard type stretch here. And if you think about it, if you flex that left foot, we're basically in lizard on our back. Press here for one more breath. And then extend the right leg nice and high as you press in one direction and then the other, just rotating through the hip. Gently bring that right foot down to the mat. Scoop your tailbone back to neutral. Take in a big inhale as you drag that left knee in towards the body. Reaching for your strap once more, take it in both hands. And begin to loop the strap just around the ball of the left foot this time. As you do, checking in with that hip, this side might be drastically different than the other, bending that right knee and placing the foot on the mat. Otherwise, extend it long, flex through the ankle. And then making sure that you're on the ball of the foot, not the toes or the arch, begin to flex the foot and we'll take those gentle pulses. Just noticing where this is the most sensational. So for me, right side is intense, right into the ischial tuberosity, right into the sits bone. But on the left side, my more open side, it tends to be a little more intense, right in the center belly of the hamstrings. So just taking notes so that we understand what's going on in our body. And then pause, just like we did before. Reconnect with the mat, so shoulder blades press back, Check in with the rib cage. We tend to flare up. Can you settle that in, activating? Flex the toes and then bring the leg a little bit closer to the face once more. Trying to keep elbows down, shoulders down, belly in, face soft. If you notice, if any of these stretches make your face cringe or curl up, it's a good indication that we've gone too far back out. Again, stay here for a few more breaths, maybe backing out just a little bit, and then coming in deeper if you have the space. And then finally, heel moves back over the hip, dial the toes out to the left, and just as before, feel less about trying to get as deep as you can in the pose and more about finding the pose intentionally. So come over on purpose, flexing the foot, pressing through the heel, and then using the left hand to bring the leg a little bit closer into the body. Press through the heel so that you feel length all the way through the calf back side of the knee into the thigh. And if you came here and are having second thoughts, you can always bend that knee once more. It gives us a little more space. Press through the heel. Be here for one more breath. Smile at it. And then use the strength of your low belly, that right hand that was connected to right hip. Bring it back to center. 
and we'll switch. So toes point back towards the face at first. Take the grip in the right hand. Connecting here, toes point forward at first. Take your left hand, thumb comes into the hip, fingertips rotate down, and then begin to come over to the right side. And again, we're just searching for sensation. So especially my runners, my skiers, you might be having a lot of sensation through that outer hip all the way down into the ankle. It's a cranky spot for a lot of us. Breathe here. And then return with an inhale. This time pressing through the heel, articulating at the hip once more. So the whole of the thigh, the whole of the calf and toes roll to the inner body. That left thumb presses into the hip crease. The fingers roll the flesh, press it back and away, and then begin to come over. If you're like me, you're seeing stars, but you know they're pretty stars. So you're breathing into them, watching them snap, crackle, and pop like fireworks. Maybe you come out a little bit. Just finding your edge, the space where sensation does not come into pain. Breathe here, one more big breath. And then inhale back to center. Releasing the strap, bend the knee, take it into our hip and squeeze. As you're here, we're moving towards that twist. So that left hand will connect to the mat Move the right hand to the outer thigh and we'll gently bring that knee a little bit closer to the right edge of our mat. Opening the side body and extending that stretch above the hamstrings, around the hip, and to the low back. Maybe an exhale lets that knee fall a little bit closer to the earth. And then we'll inhale back to center. Taking both hands around the shin, we'll begin to draw big circles in one direction. And then over in the other, being mindful of where we're feeling each movement. And then walking hands down the shin, taking the left hand to the outside edge of left foot, connecting on purpose, and then bringing that knee down towards the mat. If you're here and it's just too sensational, there's way too much tension pulling right to left, just bring that right foot onto the mat. And you'll notice how much more space that created. It gave me about two more inches. My knee came to the mat. Breathe here. Relax even here as we're actively stretching. And then big inhale, release the left foot up. And begin to rotate through the hip, right and left, right and left. Soften the left leg down with the right. Squeeze, curl toes into the heels, press the toes forward, still curled and lengthening the tops of the feet. And then open and close the toes. Maybe you stop here and this is where you pack it in for the day or you can do a little bit more maybe about five six more minutes roll on to your left side take a moment to place your right hand onto the mat and then begin to roll onto all fours hands and knees connect to the mat on purpose belly is in press down through the hand and press your left foot down on purpose and then reach your right foot back and away and as you do, try to maintain the integrity of the belly. Think about being in a high push-up or high plank on the right side. Breathe here for a moment. And then moving a little more into that outer hip, begin to pick the right foot up. Take the right foot to the outside of left foot. And then squeeze and compress left side body on purpose. Bring your gaze towards your right foot. Try to keep the right hip tracking down rather than peeling up. And then inhale, come back to center. Left or right foot presses back behind you just for a moment as we begin to slide the right foot out to the right. 
Some of you might be here feeling like this is way too much. If that's you, be here. It's a great place to practice. Otherwise, begin to sit the hips back, getting in to a little bit of the outer hip, the outer hamstrings, as well as the inner thigh and the left side quad. So it's a little bit of everything working here. Breathe. And then we'll inhale, press up, and take that on the other side. Right knee connects to the mat underneath the right hip. Belly draws in, shoulders press back and away, and left foot reaches back. And I say shoulders press back and away, but really think more about lifting collarbones forward and spreading the chest. Pressing back through that left heel, shift weight into the hands just for a moment, pick left foot up, take it to the outside edge of the right foot, and then compress right side waist, looking for that left foot. Keep the left hip drawn down rather than peeling up. And then inhale, bring that left foot back. Tap to the mat, extend through the back line once more, and then bring the left foot out to the side just as we did. Pressing into the pinky side edge of the mat, keeping hands just where they are, and beginning to sit weight back. Breathing here. And asking yourself, where is this the most sensational? Inhaling back to center. Bring the left knee in to stack under the left hip and we'll walk feet forward. If you're particularly cranky in your hamstrings, it's a good opportunity to reach for a blanket or a towel, fold it, and place it underneath your knees for a little bit of support. If that's not quite what you need today, you might even bring your sitting bones onto that folded blanket and elevate hips so that you're sitting on the sit bones and the pelvis starts to roll forward just slightly. If you're like me and you have hyperextended knees, you really don't want either. Reaching for that strap or scarf or belt, whatever you had from before, loop it around the balls of the feet once more. This will be the last thing, and then I will send you on your way, hopefully feeling a little bit longer than before. So looping the balls of the feet, take your hands, slide underneath you, pull the meat out of the way, connect sitting bones, pull belly in, shoulders stack over the hips, ears stack over the hips, and then connecting with that strap. So shoulders are in, to the body, so elbows are in the sideways. Take a big inhale, fill up, and on the exhale, use the strength of your hands to pull your heart towards your toes, keeping the spine nice and long. And if you're like me and you have some space, reach, walk down the strap, and keep the spine long, creating some tension so you find a stretch in the back side of the body. Now, if you're very flexible, I've also included some bricks what you'll like to do is take your blocks, stack them behind your feet, sit really tall, meet out of the way in case you had to move, reposition, and then reach for your block. Flexing the feet, rolling shoulders away from the chin, and breathing. We're here for two more breaths, keeping the spine really long. So I know right now we're really isolating the stretch into the low body. We'll bring the head and neck in just a moment. And after that second breath, just release your hands wherever they are. If they're holding onto a strap, let them come down on to your thighs. Those of you who can, connect them to the mat, round chin into chest, and fold. Those of you who have that blanket underneath, a really great option for you is to take this in a more restorative fashion. Interlace the hands underneath the knees and then walk the feet forward until you find the stretch. And as the feet walk forward, the forehead connects to the knees and you fold. Or maybe the feet are very lifted and the forehead is connected to the knees here, allowing the stretch to happen from the occiput down through the neck, through the back, into the sits bones. 
And then letting that stretch go. Pedaling out the knees, opening, closing the toes. And smiling, you survive. So hopefully this helps you open up, helps you recover a little bit faster. It's a great video to do over and over again, especially if you've been working on legs that day. Or if you just know that you're tight through the hamstrings, you always have been. It's a great way to unlock the low back if we can find some length in the hamstrings as well. It has been a pleasure and a privilege to get to practice with you. Namaste. If you liked this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and know when I'm bringing you new material. You can also follow me on Instagram at omwithmelissa for yoga challenges and my daily insights. Thank you.